making mistake after mistake on this food tour. That one's strong. Good afternoon from Cuzco, Peru. Today we are doing one of our favorite things and doing a DIY Peruvian food tour all throughout this ancient city. There's going to be beef, chicken, alpaca, cheese, heaps of traditional Peruvian foods and hopefully a traditional Peruvian dessert. But it all starts with something pretty iconic. Okay, maybe not truly iconic, but we've come to Papachos to get ourselves a burger. The thing that makes that burger Peruvian is the meat. Peru and South America is pretty much the only place where you can get alpaca meat. I think it's gonna be pretty much the same as an Australian having kangaroo meat, but I couldn't think of a better place to try it than Cusco. Look at this. <laughs> with the alpacas in the background. Yeah, with the poor alpacas in the background. <laughs> I read online that alpaca meat is like really, really healthy and quite a good whole source of protein. I am not having this. I'm trying to save room for something later. But I did order a chicha morada. Mmm. Ooh. Okay. Picture this. You're in Helsinki having one of those blogs, except you're not. You're somewhere really hot and it's served over ice. It's the same flavor as like a glog or a mulled wine, but it's cold. Really fragrant and delicious. I think the purple color comes from corn, like purple corn. It was under the juices side of the menu, so I'm assuming there's no alcohol in it, unlike the chicha we've had previously. <laughs> we both got to try some chicha as well. I'm already having the best time. Jordan might have panicked a little bit when he was ordering a drink and got a chocolate milkshake, which I didn't think was exactly a Peruvian thing to try, but I just Googled Peruvian chocolate. Peru is one of the places to visit for chocolate lovers. It's some of the best in the world. Ooh. On first inspection, looks really good, smells really good. Good amount of cheese. They've got their own little fries on top. Normally, I'm putting fries on there anyway, which I still did. Tomatoes look fresh, crispy lettuce, and really nice fries. So I hope it passes the taste test. Firstly, it does pass the taste test. It tastes incredible, but not like kangaroo. Kangaroo's like super high in protein and quite lean. This one does taste lean, but I feel like it's less red, if that makes sense. It's like a drier kind of meat, and it's balanced so well with those juicy tomatoes and crispy lettuce. Ah, it's really good. Oh, it's sun. Okay. I don't think I can taste the difference between that and beef. That's a really good burger though. Fries or potatoes weren't technically part of our list of things we wanted to try today, but I believe Peru has like a thousand types of potatoes. So this is technically part of the food tour. Mm. I like that they put french fries in it. That's cool. My lunch is a lot healthier than that. <laughs> This is Greenpoint, and not only is it one of Cusco's most popular restaurants, it was also named TripAdvisor's number one hidden gem in the entire world. It also happens to be a vegan restaurant, which is kind of crazy when you think about how popular it is, but we are here for a particular soup. So Greenpoint's a restaurant we've been to more than once. This is actually our third time here. Fourth, and it's effectively a garden in a half inside, half outside room. So there's like shade cloths, but there's also gorgeous Edison lights that like run along each of the ceilings. Our first time here, the waiter picked a fruit from one of the plants next to us and showed us exactly what fruit it was that we were going to be drinking. It's a very cool place, very zen. Wow! Delicious, thank you so much. This has never happened before, but I think maybe the waiter recognized us from another night. And we have a complimentary little starter. This is like a tahini and some delicious bread to dip it in. He came over and we were like, oh no, we ordered the quinoa soup. He was like, no, no. <laughs> maybe I should do some nice. That is so savory and delicious. It's almost like sesame seeds and um, chickpeas. Actually, I think chickpeas is what tahini is. <laughs> Yum. 
delicious. How well presented the drinks are here. And I know for a fact this tastes amazing, because again, it's the third time I'm having it. It's a strawberry lemonade. Thank you. It smells so good. I have gotten a very healthy looking quinoa soup because quinoa is so integral to the Peruvian diet. I'm pretty sure it originated in the Andean region of Peru and it's been around since like the Incan Empire. They call this Incan gold or the mother grain because it's been around for that long. It's also really, really healthy. It's known as like a superfood and it's so popular in Peru. They put it in salads, in soups like this and they also make a dish called Quinotto, like risotto with rice, but cooked with quinoa. This one looks incredibly healthy. The soup has come in a little teapot and you pour it over. I don't know why that's so fun. All soup should come in a teapot. <laughs> It's a very herby and fresh broth and the quinoa is perfectly cooked. There's all these delicious fresh veggies in there. Oh, just a bit healthier than your alpaca burger. <laughs> that was delicious and very, very healthy. This drink is one of my favorites we've ever had, but it's time for a more traditional Peruvian drink from a museum. To end day one of our DIY Peruvian food tour, we are of course trying some Pisco Sours. Something I didn't realize is that there's sort of a friendly rivalry between Peru and Chile on the origins and recipe of a proper Pisco Sour. Generally speaking, it seems like Peru is accepted as the origin place of Pisco, with the first known mention of the cocktail being in the 1920s, this American bartender named Victor Vaughn Morris was bartending in Lima, Peru, used Pisco as the base for a cocktail and it just gained momentum so rapidly. We have come to the Museum of Pisco to try three different recipes. You can get like an experience. They seem a bit busy today, so we've just ordered the drinks. But it's a really cool menu <laughs> and what it says is as much technical, historical and cultural knowledge as you're willing to listen to. <laughs> Which I think is quite funny. I never make mistakes. So I might have read the menu not very well. <laughs> it's a pisco tasting, not a pisco sour tasting. So we have four different types of pisco, some from this region, some are blends of grapes, some are single grapes. Which one do you want to try first? One with Machu Picchu on the bottom? Machu? Sure. Whoa, oh, you can't smell it. Is it blasphemy to say it smells a little bit peculiar? <laughs> That's very strong. Just found out that they're all between 40 and 45% alcohol. It's like straight alcohol. I think Emily might struggle through this. Whoa. This one's another singular grape, I believe. Wow. Maybe it's because I'm, I've had a lot now. That one's all the smoothest so far. And the final option is the museum's Pisco. The two you didn't like are my two favorites. That's good. Yeah. It's quite a strong alcohol and like very alcoholy taste, if that makes sense. And Jordan is the kind of person that drinks whiskey neat and on the rocks and stuff like that. I can't think of a single alcohol that I drink by itself. <laughs> I feel like this was accidentally much more up your alley. Museum of Pisco, if you're watching, implement some sort of like pisco sour sampler because that, that's what i thought this was and that sounds so much funner to me wouldn't it be cool to get like three little pisco sours okay pretty successful day one on the peru food tour but we're gonna finish these piscos go to sleep wake up tomorrow for some new food Yes, we've had to split this food tour into two days and this is the second day and I am very very hungry We thought we'd start the day at the San Pedro market Which is one of the biggest and most central and famous markets in all of Cusco and fun fact to start the day Guess who commissioned it and looked after the building of it? No idea. Gustav Eiffel Really? Like the Eiffel Tower guy? Crazy. Let's go get some juice. That's so <laughs> random! So this market is famous for having a lot of different things, including things like 
bits of camel and things you would use in like a potion. But it's also supposed to have a really massive fruit area where we should be able to get a fruit juice, hopefully of the Peruvian variety. This place is cool. Intense. There is everything you could think of from chocolates to clothes and souvenirs to like raw meat and hearts and all that. Apparently down this end as well there's going to be like some restauranty type vendors. I don't know what these people are eating but it must be good because they're two rows deep. This reminds me of Asia so much. We have decided to stop in the market for lomo saltado, which is an extremely popular Peruvian dish. It's beef strips marinated in like soy sauce with bell peppers, onions and rice, and ours came with potatoes on the side. Good job. Yes. <laughs> there is heaps of stalls here and we decided to stop at 841 because the lady's really nice. And it's only 10 soles, $5 for this huge plate. These market stalls are really cool because you can watch them prepare the dish. They have the rice all ready to go, freshened up the fries, and then there was this little pot that they were heating up all the onions and red peppers and beef in. It smells incredible. It tastes really familiar. It's almost like a beef stir fry. It's very tender beef and mild flavours. I love that we got chips. Oh. Crispiest fries in the world. It tastes like they've been cooked in all of the beef juice. That's so good. While, while we eat, everyone's like throwing their menus over the top trying to get other people to come in and eat too. There's only one fork. Not in the whole restaurant, just for us. <laughs> Have you had the fries yet? Yeah. Mm. Why is it so good? I think the rice is actually really good as well. Mm. It's so simple but so delicious. Yeah. This is the place to come. It's such a cool energy in the market. Mm. To wash down, <laughs> offering other people to sit here. To wash down our traditional Peruvian food, we've got a traditional Peruvian drink. This is Inca Cola. I think it tastes a bit like creaming soda. But I really like it and I can see how it would be addicting. This apparently sells more than Coca Cola in Peru which is nuts. It tastes exactly like creaming soda and kind of cola mixed in there, which is so confusing confusing because it's a bright yellow color. You are a sunshine. You are a sunshine. You are a sunshine. Awesome market. We are stopping off. There's like three rows of juice shops, so we have to get one. Jordan asked, What's the most Peruvian? and he's getting that. I think it's Goldenberry, which is this tiny berry we've learned about. This one, and I asked for Lucuma, which I think is the passion fruity kind of fruit that we had one day on the Salcante trip. I am making mistake after mistake on this food tour. The fruit that I thought I was getting. Is this what I am getting? Is this? Should still be good. This is goldenberry and I think pineapple and something else. Wow. Oh, it's really good. You can taste that pineapple up in that high bit of your cheeks. The idea of having juice markets in amongst all these other souvenir markets is so good because after you spent like an hour walking around and looking at everything, you can just come get a refreshing juice and I'm like, Boost your energy all the way back up. Oh, there's a the juice. Oh, gracias. Ooh. Yum. It's like mainly a mango flavor, but then like the tartness from an orange. That's really, really nice. Plus it's like thicker than yours. It's like a smoothie. Yum. Can I try yours? I like mine better. Yours is really good too though. It's very refreshing because of the pineapple. If you only have an afternoon to spend in <laughs> it's about to say Lima. If you only have an afternoon to spend in Cusco for whatever reason, come here. You can do your souvenir shopping, you can try some Peruvian dishes, you can get a delicious drink. Win, win, win. What's the next food? This 
just wasn't on the list, but how do you say no to churros? I got one chocolate or one caramel. I guess I'll have them both. It's gonna be me in a second. Sounded crunchy. Oh, bye. Aww. Not bad, not good. We had some at the Lima bus station and they were so good we went back for seconds. So I had really high hopes. Oh well. For our last dish of this Peru food tour, we've come to a very, very popular Nuna. It's a traditional Peruvian restaurant here that sits right next to the Plaza de Armas in the middle of Cusco. And like we said, it is incredibly popular. We've come here to get a specific chicken dish which looks really good. It's called Aji Galliano. Let me check. Aji de Galliano. And I think, from what I've read online, it's like a chicken dish that's got kind of like a spicy cheese sauce through it. And I'm really excited for it. I think we might have said the best for last. I'm not going to be here too. Oh, the cup is like, it's a Cuscanian cup and it has the Incan rocks. That's cool. What is it about places in Cusco and give it like unexpected and amazing appetizers? This is, I'm going to say this wrong, Uchikuta sauce, which is meant to be like a spicy sauce and local potatoes. I think we've mentioned it in this video, but potatoes in Peru are very popular, I guess. There's like a thousand different varieties. And it looks like we've got a couple of different varieties to try. And a Cuscania beer, which I believe is Peruvian, could be Cusco specific, but I think it's Peru as a whole. Wow. So it's finally here. This is the chicken. It's meant to have the spicy cheese sauce, like we said, but we actually let us keep another spicy sauce, brought an extra spicy sauce, and I didn't know it came with eggs and rice. So lots of surprises here. Also, the plating is insane. Look at these little purple globules or something. It smells so good. Uh-oh. The chicken flavor is insane. The texture is beautiful, but it kind of still has that Kind of has a little bit of a homemade kind of texture in like the best way possible. You know what I mean when you try it. Yum. It's very savory and like almost like a strong stock flavor. Pretty good. Difficult because it's also in Spanish. I just don't actually know what quinoa is. Is quinoa a fruit? <laughs> is it like a grain? Yeah. Oh. Tilly could match me. For what bit? Are you serious? <laughs> You're so annoying. <laughs> I didn't spill. 